Sweden, the Scandinavian Kingdom of Northern Europe, is one of the richest countries in the world. This status is no accident, but is due to a combination of geography, politics, culture, and investment in key economic sectors. Sweden's economy is strong, with a GDP of about $573 billion at the end of 2022. This is better than Ireland, Portugal, or Norway, for example. Looking in turn at GDP per capita, which is often used as an indicator of prosperity, it is $61,000 and growing. These are not small values. Swedes are ahead of the French, Finns, and also Canadians in this case. This shows that Sweden is not only rich as a country, but also its citizens who generally enjoy a high standard of living. When we look at the real estate market, we see that housing prices in Sweden have risen sharply in recent years. However, forecasts for 2023 show a 13% drop in prices, followed by a 1.5% increase in 2024. The most expensive apartments are in Stockholm, where the average price per square meter was almost 8,000 euros in 2022. This is almost twice as low as in New York, but almost twice as high as in Berlin. Quite interesting is the situation when it comes to investment in research and development. In 2022 alone, the Swedish government allocated $4 billion for these purposes, a decrease of $50 million compared to the previous year. Nevertheless, these investments accounted for 3.6% of total spending and 0.8% of the country's GDP. The main purpose of these investments was to improve overall knowledge at universities and colleges, which received about 50% of all R&D funding. Sweden is also home to many large corporations. In 2023, the largest companies were Atlas Copco AB, market value $57.80 billion, AB Volvo $37.06 billion, and Hexagon AB $29.56 billion, which dominate the industrial and technology sectors. It is worth mentioning that none of these companies would fit into the 100 richest companies in the United States. In June 2023, this honorable place is held by Sony, which according to market value is worth $121 billion, more than the three previously mentioned companies. Looking at the average annual salary, it is $51,000 per year. That is, Swedes earn similarly to residents of Germany or the Netherlands. It could be argued that Sweden is one of the better countries to live in, but looking at the map, you can see that the highest GDP per capita is behind the two lines you now see. In between, Sweden has a zone that is the poorest. What factors contribute to the this country developing best in the north and south. Northern Sweden is full of natural resources that contribute to the country's overall prosperity. It is here that some of the world's largest iron ore deposits are located, which translate into a significant mining and export industry. Through sustainable farming practices, these resources are utilized in a way that provides long-term income while also caring for the environment. Additionally, the tourism sector in northern Sweden is thriving thanks to unique flora, fauna, and natural phenomena such as the aurora borealis. The regions of Norrbotten, Västerbotten, and Västernorrland are the heart of northern Sweden, each with its own unique identity, while at the same time contributing to a harmonious whole. They are different from each other, yet united, creating the landscape of northern Sweden. Located farthest north, Norrbotten is Sweden's largest region in terms of area, which is 98911 square kilometers. Interestingly, this region is as large as South Korea, Iceland, or Portugal. It is often called the last wild corner of Europe. The southern border of the region is the Pulse Circle, or Arctic Circle, which means that for part of the year, the sun does not set here. To the south of Norrbotten is the Västerbotten region. While not as vast as Norrbotten, it offers an equally charming landscape that oscillates from mountain peaks in the west to coastal plains in the east. This region stretches over 55432 square kilometers, making it larger than Switzerland or Belgium. Further south is Västernorrland. This region is known for its beautiful scenery of the Baltic Sea coast and numerous islands. Rich forests, lakes, and rivers create a diverse ecosystem here. Analyzing these regions economically, one notes their remarkable development and stability. Unemployment is at a relatively low level. According to 2023 data, the unemployment rate was 7.5% for Norrbotten, 6.8% for Västerbotten, and 7.2% for Västernorrland. These are comparable to the national average, which was 7.36% in 2022. 
The average salary in these regions is also competitive nationally. Norbotten with a gross annual salary of $43,000, Vasterbotten with $45,000, and Vaster Norland with $42,000. Of course, these statistics are an average and can vary by industry. These regions are dominated by industry, agriculture, fishing, forestry, and importantly, the IT sector, which is increasingly popular and growing rapidly. In terms of education, these regions are at the national average with a high percentage of people with a college degree. Surprisingly, despite their remote location, these regions are home to several well-known universities, such as Lulia University of Technology in Norbotten and Umea. A major project like the Northvolt ETT battery factory in the town of Skellefteå in Vasterbotten, scheduled for completion in 2025, is helping to keep the region economically booming. Investments in recent years have enabled the region to avoid the economic decline that has affected the rest of Sweden. However, despite the positive outlook, there are also challenges. High energy prices could limit growth in the regions, and high construction costs could slow the pace of construction activity. Labor shortages, particularly in Vasterbotten, could also slow growth, while regional and municipal officials in the north of Sweden have expressed concern that they are having difficulty filling public sector positions in the face of the employment boom in the high-tech industry that has taken off there in recent years. It's now time to move on to the South, which is home to many of the country's key cities, such as Stockholm and Gothenburg, which are centers for industry, technology, culture, and education. Many global companies such as IKEA and Volvo are located here, contributing to the economy both through direct production and by generating jobs. The education and research sector is also strong, with many well-known universities and research institutes that attract students and scientists from around the world. Looking to the south, there are many rich regions here, but the most interesting are Stockholm, Vastragotaland, and Skana, which are Sweden's leading economic forces. Each has its own unique character, but all three have one thing in common, their undeniable strength and influence on the Swedish economy. Stockholm, the country's capital, is more than just the political heart of Sweden. It lies on the country's east coast, on the border between Lake Malaren and the Baltic Sea. The region, made up of 14 islands, is Scandinavia's largest city and home to 2.4 million residents, with an unemployment rate of 5.2% and an average gross annual salary of $60,000. The region is the richest and most economically developed in Sweden. Education levels are high here, with a large number of university graduates, thanks to the presence of such prestigious universities as Stockholm University, and the Royal Institute of Technology. In the west of the country, on the North Sea coast, is the Vastra Gotaland region, with its center in Gothenburg, Sweden's second largest city, is a dynamic region with more than 1.7 million people. The unemployment rate here is 6.3%, and the average gross annual salary is $528,800 per year. The region is known for its strong industrial economy, with the automotive and manufacturing industries playing a dominant role. The University of Gothenburg is an important place for education and research, contributing to the high level of education in the region. Skane is Sweden's southernmost region, separated from Denmark by the Orison Strait, over which an impressive bridge is thrown connecting Malmö to Copenhagen. It should be noted that it is an important economic center with close ties to Denmark, especially through the Orson Bridge connection to Copenhagen. Malmö, Sweden's third largest city, is home to an unemployment rate of 7.1% and an average gross annual salary of $52,000. Lund University is one of the oldest and most prestigious universities in Sweden, contributing to the high level of education in the region. The wealth of these regions stems from a combination of factors, a strong financial and business sector in Stockholm, a strong industrial base in Vastragotaland, and a diversified economy in Skana, which is dominated by agriculture, the food industry, and the IT sector. All of these elements, supported by solid infrastructure, investment in education and innovation, make these three regions among the most competitive and economically strong in the world. However, the strength of these regions comes not only from their material wealth, but also from their spirit of innovation, entrepreneurship, and relentless pursuit of excellence. With their people striving for continuous improvement, investment in the future, and openness to the world, Stockholm, Vastragotaland, and Skana will continue to serve as pillars of the Swedish economy and an inspiration to the rest of the world. The region is characterized by economic diversity, with a predominance of manufacturing and the service sector. 
The manufacturing industry, accounting for 27% of the region's GDP, is a key component of the southern Swedish economy. The region is host to many well-known companies in the biotech, medical, and technology sectors. Clean energy technologies and bioeconomics are also of great importance. The service sector, which accounts for 70% of the region's GDP, is equally important. The area is known for its high-quality education and research opportunities, with world-renowned universities such as Lund University. The city of Malmo, with a developed IT and culinary sector, also plays an important role in the service sector. Despite the dominance of industry and the service sector, agriculture still plays an important role in the economy of southern Sweden, particularly in grain and vegetable production. The region also has some of the largest vineyards in the country. But southern Sweden, despite its economic success, faces several challenges. One is climate change, which could affect the region's production and agricultural sectors. Although the region is a leader in clean energy technologies, further development of this sector is necessary. Finally, the region faces challenges related to cultural and social diversity, which are key to maintaining and improving. Norland's economy is dominated by mining and forestry. The iron mines in Karuna and Malmberget are extremely important to the global steel market. Norland's vast forests are an essential source of raw material for the paper and furniture industries. Although the region's economy is less diverse than in other parts of Sweden, it is crucial to the country's overall economy. On the other hand, Gotland, Sweden's southernmost region, is dominated by agriculture, industry, and services. Here, the climate is much milder, with warmer winters and longer warm summers. Densely populated cities such as Gothenburg and Malmo teem with life and culture, offering residents and visitors a wide range of attractions and opportunities. Language and culture also differ between these regions. Accents and dialects are decidedly different, with smooth Swedish in the north and a more wavy dialect in the south. Swedes in the north are generally calmer and more conservative, while in the south they are more expressive and always seem to be on the run. The north is also home to phenomenon such as the Aurora Borealis and indigenous Sami culture, while the south offers more social and entertainment options, larger cities and international airports. Sweden is characterized by a regional economic division. The northern regions, rich in natural resources, have strong mining, agriculture, fishing, forestry, and a growing IT sector. Despite their remote location, these regions are home to renowned universities such as Luleå University of Technology. Northern Sweden is also known for its sustainable resource management and thriving tourism sector. As of 2022, the mining sector employed more than 7,000 people, most of whom were employed in Norrbotten and Västerbotten, where most mining facilities are located. Unemployment is at a low level and average annual wages are competitive by national standards. The south of the country is home to key cities such as Stockholm and Gothenburg which are centers of industry, technology, culture, and education. Many global companies such as IKEA and Volvo contribute to the economy through direct production and job generation. The unemployment rate in the South is low and average annual wages are high. These regions are also home to many prestigious universities that attract students from all over the world. Regardless of regional differences, Sweden maintains a stable economy and is one of the best places to live in the world. That would be it for today. Thanks for your attention. If you would like to hear more about the central part of the country, let me know in the comments. I encourage you to leave a subscription and a like, and we'll hear from you in the next material. Bye.